like to call together call to order the ninth meeting of the 2013-14 Common Council. Would the clerk please read today's quote? Thank you, Mayor. If everyone is moving forward together, then success takes care of itself. Thank you. Uh, next is our roll call. Fifteen present. And Alderman Heideman is excused. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item is the approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Those minutes are before us. Any discussion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? 15 ayes. Next is uh, resignations. City Attorney. Thank you, Your Honor. There's a uh, email to the mayor from Josh Eldridge advising that he's uh, formally resigning from the Sheboygan County S Sustainability Task Force. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? 15 ayes. Next, we'll go on to council appointments. City Attorney. This is dated to today's date, honorable members of the council, pursuant to section 66.0101 of the Wisconsin statutes, <coughs> repealing charter ordinance number 1-9798 and creating chapter two, article four, division four of the municipal code, providing for the appointment of the city assessor. We hereby recommend that Lee Grosnick be appointed as the city assessor for the city of Sheboygan, effective immediately, signed by the mayor and uh, Mr. Modio, the chief administrative officer. We're going to take all three of them then. There's a similar letter, also today's date, uh, <coughs> references section 2-415 of the municipal code relating to the position of director of information technology. Uh, the undersigned being the mayor and the chief administrative officer hereby recommend uh, that the council uh, appoint Dave Augustin as director of information technology for the city effective immediately. And the third one is <coughs> pursuant to Charter Ordinance Number 61-12-13, which repealed and recreated subsection 2-937A of the Municipal Code, providing for the appointment of the Finance Director Treasurer. Uh, we hereby recommend that Nancy Buss be appointed as the Finance Director Treasurer for the City of Sheboygan, effective immediately, again signed by the Mayor and the uh, Chief Administrative Officer. Alderman Hammond. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to suspend the rules. Second. It's moved and seconded to suspend the rules. If there's no objection to suspension, anyone? You wanna go ahead and vote. Okay, go ahead with your motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to uh, approve all three appointments. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Those three appointments are before us. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? 15 ayes. And then there's one additional appointment. This uh, laid over from prior meeting, uh, the appointment of Christine Camp, Early Learning Center teacher as the Sheboygan Area School District representative to the library board. Fills the unexpired term of Chad Stalber Soik, whose term expires on April 30, 2016. Alderman Hammond. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I move to confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? 15 ayes. <clears throat> 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 
Next, uh, I just want to make a brief explanation before we go into the public forum. In the past uh, couple of months, there's been some questions raised about what can and can't be presented at uh, public forums. And Sue Richards, our clerk, was asked to verify the ordinance. And uh, what was found was that essentially in uh, the document that a 25 minute period known as the public forum is hereby established during each common council meeting prior to the consent agenda whereby anyone wishing to speak on any relevant, any subject relevant to city government will be given five minutes. So uh, we're gonna start using that language and uh, eliminate some of the things that are not relevant to city government. So we've uh, talked to the people who are speaking tonight and the clerk's office will be making people that call in to uh, sign up for the forum in the future aware of that. And, uh, and hopefully we can do a better job and still have our public forum and conduct business properly. Please go on with the public forum, Sue. Yes, this evening we have five people on public forum. Uh, first on the list is Dulcie Johnson. Dulcie, if you could come up to the front, please. <coughs> and Dulcie, can I have your home address? 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. Thank you, you will have five minutes. Thank you. Mayor Vandersteen, City Clerk Richards, City Attorney McLean, Aldermen and Citizens. <clears throat> First, I would like to address the cost of the ambulance service. As you know, the ambulance budget only includes salaries and benefits for four firefighters, but the salary benefit total in 2012 for the 21 firefighters required to operate three ambulances 24-7 was $1,345,978. <coughs> EMS calls accounted for 75% of the incidents that firefighters responded to. 75% of 1,345,978 is $1,009,483. Bringing the total expenses of the ambulance service to $1,287,574. This includes $97,305 for contracted services. Actual collections were 42% of what was billed. <clears throat> Subtracting revenues of $1,128,284 results in a loss of $158,290 for the ambulance service in 2012. The audit reported $650,000 in 2012 transferred to the general fund from the ambulance service, which is about half of what the total expenses of the service are. Revisiting the email exchange, exchange that Mr. Amodio, and I, Mr. Amodio and I had last year about collections, Mr. Amodio wrote that because Medicare and Medicaid only pay on average 38% of the amount billed, the most the city collect, could collect was 58% of all claims billed, and that the city was collecting 77% of the 58%. I believe that Alderman Bourne is planning a committee of the whole meeting with the EMS billing company who will undoubtedly, undoubtedly paint a rosier picture than my analysis. But you must ask, would Orange Cross consider what they could have collected or adjustments that they had to write off as part of their revenue for the year? I think not. I have discussed the ambulance accounting system with three P CPAs who all agree that you cannot declare a profit unless you include all your expenses and you cannot include what you could have collected or what you had to write off as revenue. Actual collections for 2012 were 42% of what was billed. Secondly, <clears throat> tonight's agenda includes a resolution that would limit public forum remarks to three minutes. I have no doubt that there are some aldermen who would like to completely eliminate the public forum. Why is this document being referred to strategic fiscal planning rather than the Committee of the Whole? What does the issue have to do with strategic fiscal planning? One must presume that it has something to do with politics. I served as an alderman for eight years, 1980 to 88, and chose not to run for a fifth term. We did not have a restriction on the number of citizens who could speak at a meeting and no restrictions on the length of time a citizen could speak. I did not feel put upon by this. The mayor read aloud the summary of every document on the agenda. Our meetings usually ran until about 10 o'clock. 
The Committee of the Whole met every other Monday night. Our yearly pay was $2,100. We didn't have email then, but I received a lot of letters and answered a lot of phone calls from constituents, which sometimes were not pleasant experiences. But I chose to run for elected office. This is what the position required as a representative of the people. If one does not have the time or patience required to represent the public, you probably shouldn't run for public office. Granted, you may consider some public forum presentations as inappropriate, but I hope you will not penalize constituents who may have serious issues to discuss and who may need more than three minutes to adequately make their case because of the inappropriateness of some. Five minutes is a reasonable time, and I hope we will vote against limiting public forum speakers to three minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Dulcie. <clears throat> Next on the list is Henry Capitello. Good evening, Henry, and can we get your home address, please? Yes, that's 1619 North 38th Street. Shalom. And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. Um, thank you, council members, mayor. Uh, the reason I'm here is I'm representing the Gateway Neighborhood Association. I am the president of the Gateway Neighborhood Association. At the last council meeting, there were some concerns regarding our temporary liquor license. I was present at the lawn licensing meeting, and pretty much all of those issues were set to rest. Um, the other reason I'm here is um, the Gateway Neighborhood Association has one major fundraiser, and that is the Michigan Avenue block party that we have. That is the bulk of our fundraising that we have. And this year, we, we tried to be more inclusive of a lot of the participants that were in the area. In fact, we developed a planning committee for the development of the Michigan Avenue Block Party. Um, for the committee, we had members of the police department. We had uh, Sergeant David Anderson, who has been at all the meetings. We've invited some of the tavern owners at we're also in the Michigan Avenue. We tried to be more inclusive of this to be a family-oriented event. That's why we recruited um, Pastor Bob Abel from Remedy Church. We recruited also Gene Poulos from the Sheboygan Leadership Academy, which is the school that is now in the old RCS building. Uh, Mayor, you were there at the annual meeting. And we did this because we wanted to get more involvement for the children that came at the last black party, we, we had quite a few young children that came there. So what we did is we wanted to be inclusive of that. So what we did is we developed more family-oriented activities. One of the concerns that both Pastor Bob Abel and Gene Poulos had was that they did, did not want to be anywhere near where they were serving the alcohol. And we said definitely we would, we would uh, satisfy that. So what we did is, we scheduled all our children's activities in on 11th Street, which is at the center. We're serving alcohol on 12th Street and on 10th Street, nothing in that area. But the problem that we have now is that we have one of the bars that's located right on the corner on, the, on 11th Street that has requested a extension of their liquor license, which will now be serving if granted, we'll be serving alcohol directly right where all our children activities are going to be. Um, I see that as a concern, number one. When we first st started this, we met with the police department and one of the, the main issues that uh, the police department had was that they did not want to have any of the buyers extend their liquor license because we were going to be doing this, we were gonna be serving alcohol, and we wanted to limit to that to have more control over what happened. Um, at this point, in fact, some of the buyers even wanted to extend their liquor license to expand, to cover the entire street for the event, which pretty much would have been unacceptable for the police department. And we, we made that known to the taverns that were involved with this. Uh, the concern that we have is we don't know what kind of barriers they're going to have to keep their patrons from coming onto the street. We don't know 
um, what will, will happen if we have people bringing in alcohol, and we're talking hard liquor, we're not talking beer, they're gonna be serving anything they serve in the tavern, and the concern that we have is patrolling this we have hired, or we will be hiring, Sheboygan Police Department officers that are gonna be pretty much patrolling the area that we have, plus some of the people that we have for security also. The concern that we have is what kind of security is gonna be provided by Brennan's if you approve that. The, uh, the other concern that I have is, um, for us, are we going to now have to be policing their area in addition to the areas that we have to do for our event? Um, this is a one-time event. August 24th is the scheduled. Um, I know Mr. Bennon has every right to be able to request an extension of his liquor license. I bet why would it have to be on the day that we have the event that we are proposing? Um, if it would be any other day, I would be here in support of, of him doing that. And we've been supportive of all of the things that we have to promote business on Michigan Avenue. Uh, also the concern that we have is if it is granted this year, I can almost guarantee you next year we will face the issue of other buyers saying, well, why can't we just open up and have it extended to the entire street? Excuse me, Henry. Would you like your extra minute? Yes. And then we have the issue of them coming here and requesting their extension of their liquor license to include the entire street, um, which we probably would definitely not be involved because of the liability of that. I mean, it's one thing having beer being served, but when you look at entire, all the bars serving alcohol and all different types of alcohol on the street, which I, th I think is probably would not be acceptable to the Sheboygan Police Department. And we have been inclusive of everybody. We've given them our minutes to our meetings, we've invited them, we've sent them agendas of the minutes, and so what I would ask is that you send their request back to law and license so it can be discussed. I know I talked to our alderman, Alvern Kevin Matchek, and also I talked the Chief Domogowski, they were unaware that they approved it at the last law and licensing meeting until I approached them and they said, did you know that you, they said, well, no, we weren't in favor of that, so. Excuse me, Henry. Okay, Your thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next this evening would be Steve Benish. Is Steve here? Hi, Steve. Can I have your home address, please? 1928 Tivoli Lane. Say it again. Sorry. Say it again. 1928 Tivoli Lane. Okay. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Steve Benish. I own the two magic car washes in town. More importantly tonight, I am here on behalf of the Gateway Neighborhood Association. I'm the vice president of the association. Like Henry said, on August 24th, we'll be hosting the second annual Michigan Avenue Block Party. It's a business corridor event. It's our biggest and really, like Henry said, our only fundraiser of the year. Uh, this event directly benefits the local businesses in that neighborhood. It gets people onto the street and purchasing things at their stores that they you know, otherwise would purchase somewhere else. More importantly, it keeps local money, money in the local community. This event also indirectly benefits all the residents, businesses, and property owners in the neighborhood because of what we use the money that we generate uh, for. Some of the things include the community garden on the corner of 10th and Erie that you've all seen that we put up this year. This garden gets neighbors talking to neighbors and reporting things they see in the neighborhood uh, to the police and to each other. Uh, we're also working on starting a business corridor association similar to the bid district on 8th Street. We want to help the Michigan Avenue area businesses grow and prosper. Uh, we are dir directly working with the city and Habitat for Humanity on refurbishing some dilapidated properties in the neighborhood revitalization strategy area. We also work directly with the police to help the crime and drug problem in our neighborhoods. Uh, the Michigan Avenue Block Party event takes a lot of time and business coordination to make happen. We started planning early this year and have worked closely with many businesses to get this off the ground. The planning committee consists of G uh, Gateway Neighborhood Association members, police, church leaders, and school leaders. We have spent countless hours of our personal time organizing things, 
making phone calls, getting thousands of dollars in cash and prize donations from local businesses, and marketing the event. Uh, we even have one of the Sheboygan Police uh, Department officers, Sergeant David Anderson, directly involved on the planning committee with us this year to ensure we're doing things correctly in conjunction with law enforcement and to make sure we address any of their issues. Last year, like Henry said, we, we really wanted to get the bars included into the event and the bars wanted to extend their liquor permits. But like Henry said, the police were absolutely opposed to that for the numerous concerns Henry raised. One bar this year, Brennan Sun, Michigan, is trying to extend his liquor permit outside of his bar to the event. Tom Brennan was originally involved in the planning for this year and was originally supportive of our cause. He attended the first few meetings we had, was copied on all the meeting minutes and agendas, and seemed like he was willing to participate as a vendor for the event. At some point, however, he decided that he didn't want to work with the other five bars in beer vending for the event and decided he would do his own event and serve hard liquor outside of the bar directly next to all of the children's activities for the block party with no security to speak of and without explaining to anyone how he will prevent over-serving or prevent people from taking their drinks into the block party event. I am a business owner and I have no issue with another business doing something they deem as good for their business. However, Tom Brennan has 364 other days of the year to have his own event. My concern, my main concern, and the concern that the entire council and everybody in here should have is that Tom Brennan was able to convince a few of the common council members to sweep his application for an extension of liquor permit under the rug without any discussion at the Law and Licensing Committee two weeks ago. There was, never was the opportunity even giving, given to the chief to share the city police department's recommendation on this extension. Tom Brennan wasn't even there to explain to anyone how he was planning to prevent over-serving or to provide security or any other answers to the same questions we had to answer when the Gateway Neighborhoods application was pulled back to committee from the Common Council because of those exact concerns. Not only should you be all aware that this application was swept under the rug with no discussion during law and licensing two weeks ago, it is going to be attempted to be swept under the rug during tonight's meeting, again, with no discussion, no answers to questions, and no opportunity to get a police recommendation from the chief. This will happen during the consent agenda, item 3.9. It's a sad state of affairs when certain members of the Common Council are concerned less about the public safety and supporting a good cause that benefits the local community than they do the special interests of a business they patronize. I urge each and every one of you to consider the ramifications of granting Brennan's extension permit during the block party event. Please vote no on this item, or at minimum, pull the item from the consent agenda and send it back to law and licensing, where it can be properly addressed and debated with input from our police chief, other alder persons, nonprofits, and citizens, rather than allowing it to undermine all of the benefits and the hard work the many people, businesses, and nonprofit organizations involved with the Michigan Avenue Block Party. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next we have Neil, is it Jonathan? Neil, if you'd like to come up to the front here, please. Neil, can I have your home address, please? 1815 South 13th Street. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. Uh, I had, I was going around the city here asking people about a dangerous tree in my yard and my neighbor's yard, and I'm just here tonight to thank Steve McLean. I saw him the other day, and he went above and beyond what an attorney's job should be to help me to the city, this would be a small problem, but to me and my neighbor, a tree hanging over my house like this is a dangerous situation. And Mr. McLean actually pulled the talk to the right people at the right time they came to my house and they said that this job would be done. So I personally want to thank Attorney McLean for doing exceptional work. Thank you all. 
Thank you, Neil. Thank you. And lastly, we have Jim Van Akron. Is Jim here? Good evening, Jim. Can we have your home address, please? Yes, it's 432 Lincoln Avenue. Okay, you will have five minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for uh, allowing uh, us to speak uh, tonight and for allowing me this opportunity to address uh, the issue on um, the agenda item is 7.8, the resolution regarding uh, Evergreen Park and uh, the, um, the conflict that has developed uh, regarding the use of the ski trails and the use of the park uh, by uh, the Rotary organizations. Um, I ask you to uh, pass this resolution. Um, there has, I am a, uh, a volunteer ski trail groomer uh, providing a service uh, for the citizens of the community along with three other individuals. Uh, we provide, the, we groom the ski trails at Evergreen Park and Maywood uh, so that it, it's available for community use. And um, we became concerned about uh, Rotary's uh, request to expand their program bo uh, in time uh, and how that would affect uh, the ski season. And uh, as a result of that, uh, there has been a number of uh, meetings between members of Rotary, Dave Beeble, and uh, those individuals who support the ski trails. And for a long time, it looked like there was going to be some difficulty uh, resolving this issue. And uh, through a great deal of work by some of the groomers, they found some alternatives that might very well work. This resolution uh, addresses those alternatives. Um, it does not necessarily resolve the conflict, but it, it's the first step in trying to resolve the conflict. Uh, there's a lot to be done over the next few years uh, to see if this works. Uh, hopefully in two years we can be back before you saying thank you and that it all has worked out. Uh, I am uh, not sure that that's going to happen, so I might be back in two years saying we still have a problem here. Um, and I think, uh, given the opportunity I have to, to speak before you, I just want to give you all a little bit of a history of these trails. Uh, they first began in 1984. Uh, the JCs were the impetus behind it, and Mayor Vandersteen was uh, one of the leaders in making sure that we have ski trails here in Sheboygan. They've continued for, uh, this has continued for 29 years now. Uh, I looked at our statistics uh, for the last eight years, and our average start date for the ski season was December 13th or 14th, and our average end date is March uh, 5th or 6th. Obviously, this conflicts with what Rotary wants, uh, their use of the park. Uh, the, the problem is, is the, the, the roadway through the park is desired by both the, the skiers and uh, the Rotary organization. Uh, it's a lit area. It's wide enough for our grooming equipment. It obviously is lit for, and provides electricity for their program and provides a, a route for uh, cars to go through. Um, and a great deal of time was spent trying to figure out a way to make it work through the park uh, but it, and on that roadway, but it, it, it does not appear that that's going to work. That's why we have the alternative trailhead in area number five uh, in Evergreen Park, and hopefully that will provide the uh, resolution along with the building of a new bridge sometime in the next two years. Um, the Rotary, I, I, don't, I only think this can work um, if the city, Rotary, and uh, the ski groomers are committed to making it work. Up to this point, it appears that way, and your vote tonight in support of the resolution, I think, will further that along. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Next, we'll go on to mayor's comments. Uh, I'd like to uh, ask Nancy Wisemer to come forward. The city is pleased to welcome Nancy as our new control, contr comptroller treasurer. Nancy joins the city with over 20 years of progressive experience in the finance and accounting area. She received her associate's degree in accounting from LTC at Cleveland, her bachelor's of arts degree in accounting from Lakeland College in Sheboygan. She's held various cost accounting uh, positions at the Kohler Company and Mayline Company. 
and most recently held the position of accounting uh, manager with Mayline. Uh, Nancy in her spare time, or she and her husband enjoy golfing and traveling to Mexico and other warm locations. I'd like to just w welcome Nancy to the she Sheboygan team. <laughs> Go ahead. I hope I get the opportunity to get introduced to all of you and I look forward to meeting with you and hopefully down the road we'll We'll form a good team. So. Thank you very much, Nancy. <laughs> I'd also like to just remind people that tomorrow is National Night Out. Um, it'll be uh, Tuesday night at Fountain Park. The event starts at 6 o'clock with some activities in the park. And then at 6.30, they'll start uh, their two-mile walk through some of our city neighborhoods. So please keep that in mind for tomorrow evening. Next, we'll conduct a hearing. It's a hearing to change the use uh, district classification of a property at 2708 Superior Avenue from SI Suburban Industrial to Class SC Suburban Commercial Classification. Would anyone like to be heard? Is there anyone here for this hearing? Would anyone wish to be heard? Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to close the hearing. Second. It's been moved and supported to close the hearing. Yeah. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, will the clerk call the roll. 15 ayes. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. This would include items 3.1 through 3.13. Alderman Hammond. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Question for uh, City Clerk Richards on that document 3-9 that they were talking about on the uh, public forum regarding uh, Brennan's extending their uh, outdoor serving. Uh, could we send the Brennan issue back separately or would we have to send the whole document back to law and licensing? No, we can send it back separately. I believe Alderman Manichek is planning on dividing the question and doing right. that. Well, thank you. Sure. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd uh, move to divide the question. Second. Thank you for that motion and second. Okay, we're going to deal with uh, just the um, the Brennan's issue separately then. Yes. What we're going to do is we're going to divide the question to remove Bren Brennan's from the RC and keep the rest of the license in the consent agenda. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Okay, then the vote is to divide the question. Uh, please call the roll. Fifteen ayes. Okay, the uh, the Brennan's item then will be before us first. Any Alderman Matichek. Thank you. Uh, move to send it back to the law and licensing. Second. Second. It's been moved and second to send the uh, the Brennan's issue back to law and licensing. Uh, Alderman, any other discussion? Will the clerk call the roll on that. 14 ayes, zero noes, and one abstention. Okay, then we're back to the consent agenda. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file all our O's, accept and adopt all our C's, and put all resolutions upon their passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept and file all our O's, accept and adopt all our C's, and pass all resolutions. Any discussion on the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen eyes. Next, we'll move on to communications and petitions. Uh, items 4.1 through 4.3, those will be referred to various committees. Alderman Hammond. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, on document 4.1, um, just curious of why that's going to two separate committees um, versus just a salary and grievances. Um, that's just the way that the clerk set it up. <laughs> okay. Wait a minute. 
Would you like uh, to clarify that? Clerk? That's how I was directed to do it. So I would just ask an alderman that directed me to. Alderman Boren. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Uh, I was the author of that document, and there's another one. There's another one that uh, I don't know if Alderman Hammond's going to ask about or not. Uh, first, I wanted to go to salary and grievance because that's the committee that it's germane to, and the reason I wanted to go to committee of the whole as eventually I want this this document and the other one that I'm sending forward uh, regarding the uh, contribution for city employees' health insurance. I want both of those to be part of the. Uh, part of the budget discussions as we go forward with the 2014 budget. Okay, thank you for that explanation. Alderman Donahue. Uh, my only concern with this particular resolution and the one to follow is that a discussion of <clears throat> health insurance premium rates really does belong within the discussion of the budget. To pull these out separately is to take them out of context. It is to highlight um, one particular financial issue and I fear that it does not do well for the rest of the budget process. I think we need to be more disciplined about making sure that we don't do what the folks in Madison do and take the budget process and use it for other, other issues or other means. So I think we do need to keep all of these budget questions within the budget discussion. Going to salary and grievance, because salary and grievance, like all the other committees will be discussing the budget, is appropriate. To pull this out for Committee of the Whole, in my opinion, is inappropriate. Alderman Bourne. Thank you. I, I respectfully disagree, Alderman Donahue. Uh, this, is, this is a very important issue that does affect the budget. And generally, the Committee of the Whole, uh, the purpose of the Committee of the Whole is to discuss big picture items. And this does relate to the budget, and I think eventually I will be having a committee of the whole uh, on the budget before it goes to the council for final approval. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Donahue. The problem is, is that this particular document is not germane to our issue. We are comparing apples and oranges, as we always say. Um, Alderman Bourne is asking us to compare the city's costs with generalized private insurance rates that those numbers are from 2011. We're talking about the 2014 budget. Um, I do respect the Milwaukee Journal. I, I read it, but I don't think that an article about insurance rates in private industry whose terms and conditions we cannot know and do not know is germane to our discussion about the 2014 budget. So again, if we're having a committee of the whole meeting to talk about the entire budget, well then of course we can talk about health insurance premiums. But this particular item, and the Milwaukee Journal document has been talked about in these chambers and at committee meetings over and over again. It's mildly interesting, but it is not germane to what we're dealing with. And so I again suggest that this is simply inappropriate for consideration. We've had a little bit of discussion here, but there's still not a motion on the floor. If somebody would like to change the referral, I'd accept a motion. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the document 4-1 uh, go to salaries and grievances. Second. Thank you for that motion. Further discussion, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Again, with all due respect, Alderman Donahue, you apparently had no difficulty accepting the information that you got from our insur insurance broker M3 in the publication that they presented, but I wouldn't expect M3 to look at independent data. They're only going to present something that makes them look good. And they, present, they presented, in their presentation, they did present some private sector data, but only out of their book of business. The, uh, the two reports that I came up with that were in the Milwaukee Journal do not have a dog in the hunt. This is, this is independent information that quotes national health insurance rates, and then the other article uh, has to do with private sector rates as compared to the state of Wisconsin. Uh, this is vital data. I think it shows a very important uh, difference between 
what the private sector in Wisconsin and the United States is paying for their health insurance. And again, it's information where there's no dog in the hunt. But I, I would just interesting to uh, hear you say why you're willing to accept the data from M M3 with no questions asked like it's Bible when they definitely have a, a conflict of interest in the data they're presenting to us. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think we may be somewhat splitting here. Is the budget's going to come to the committee of the whole at which time health insurance will certainly be part of that. And I think everybody would agree at that point everything is on the table for, for discussion. Um, Alderman Bourne's uh, information is very interesting and should become part of, this, part of the budget discussion. However, I'm not sure it should be a separate referral in and amongst itself to the Committee of the Whole where salaries and grievances over time has dealt with the health insurance and benefit package issues for the, uh, for the, uh, for the council. The only caveat I will say, uh, add on to Alderman Bourne's comment in, in somewhat of defense of M3, is that although, yes, they are our broker, <laughs> Um, a lot of, much of the data that they did talk about was from uh, firms like Hewitt and MRA, which are independent firms, highly respected in the health insurance industry. So again, not everything was, it was from their book of business. But again, my whole reason for sending this is the budget will come to council or come to committee of the whole. Um, certainly these are valid points that can be brought up during it, but I don't think these should be standalone documents in committee of the whole. Should go to salaries and grievances as our normal protocol would call for. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll on the motion? What are we voting on? The motion is the to referral. have this document referred to Salary and Grievance Committee only, 4.1. 14 ayes, 1 no. The other referrals will uh, be as printed in the agenda then. Next, we'll go on to number five, reports of officers. Those will all be referred. That's items 5.1 through 5.8. <clears throat> Under resolutions, uh, item 6.1, a resolution by Alderman Heideman authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a state slash municipal agreement for design and construction for the Eisner Avenue reconstruction from North 8th Street to North 21st Street, scheduled for 2013 construction. Alderman Hammond, oh, I'm sorry, Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Um, move to suspend the rules on this one, please. Second. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please go ahead, Alderman Boren. We need to vote. <clears throat> vote on the suspension? Yep. Go ahead and vote then. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 15 ayes. The reason, the reason for this suspension is uh, the originally, uh, when the agreement was done, uh, there was no provision for the, uh, for the people to get paid, so we're taking care of that. So now that we've suspended the rules, I would uh, make a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and that support. Any discussion on the motion? The clerk, please call the roll. Fifteen eyes. Next, we'll go on to item six point two that will lie over. Six point three through six point nine will all be referred to various committees. We'll go on to item number. You need something first, Alderman Hammond. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd move that six point nine go to salary and grievances as well for the same reasons indicated earlier. Second. Okay, we have a motion to refer 6.9 to salary and grievances. Any discussion on that motion? Alderman Bourne. Uh, not on that one, but I want to be called on for 6.5 also. Okay, well, we're going to dispense with 6.9 first. Any other discussion on 6.9? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll? Hold on. Thirteen eyes, two noes. And then uh, Alderman Boren, you wanted to make a motion on six point five. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, I make a motion to uh, file uh, six point five. It's it's redundant. We have another document uh, in the agenda tonight that will cover that. 
Second. Thank you for that motion and support. 6.5 is before us. The motion to file. Any discussion? See none. Will the clerk call the roll? <coughs> 15 ayes. And the remaining docs, docs will be referred as noted. Then we'll go on to reports of committees. First is item 7.1, an RC by Public Protection and Safety recommended filing. Uh, a document submitted uh, a communication from Alderman Lewandowski asking for a four-way stop on the corner of Michigan Avenue and North 14th Street. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and adopt the report. Second. Uh, then uh, we have a motion in support. Any discussion on that motion? Very good. Will the clerk please call the roll? Second. Alderman Lewandowski. Yes, I, I'd like to have this sent back to the Public Protection and Safety Committee meeting. On the other matters for tonight, <coughs> item 3.3 is asking for this item to be sent back to Public Protection and Safety. It's from the one of the owners of Trilling, and if you read it, the last paragraph says that I request that this matter not be filed at this time and request that it be referred back to the Public Protection and Safety Committee for further discussion. Is there a second to that motion? Second. It's been um, motioned and supported uh, to refer that back to Public Protection and Safety. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll? Eleven ayes, four noes. I'm sorry, 11 eyes, four noes. Okay. And then we'll go on to item 7.2, an RC by law and licensing recommending that the Common Council not renew the taxi cab operator's license 9812 held by Vincent Krupinski and Alderman Vanderweil. Thank you. Move the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept and adopt the RC. Any discussion? Um, is Vincent Kropinski here this evening? He's not here. We had invited him to our meeting at two separate occasions, and he did not appear either time. Okay. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll? 15 ayes. Next is item 7.3, an RC by Strategic Fiscal Planning recommended filing documents submitting a communication from Alderman Lewandowski stating concerns regarding the fact that the handicap lift on the north side of City Hall has been removed due to lack of availability of parts to repair and states that it's dangerous to have to park on the street and use the handicap ramp located at the front of City Hall. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I move to accept and adopt. Second. We have a motion to accept and adopt. Under discussion, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I first want to thank Alderman Lewandowski for bringing this um, in. Um, it also, as part of this discussion, um, we've identified that we probably have more issues inside City Hall than we might be aware of. Um, so one of the things we are going to embark in after or out of this is a comprehensive study of what we're doing here. This was done back in 2007 and they elected not to make a lot of the improvements and upgrades that needed to happen. Um, and now we're going to blow the dust off of that and relook at what we need to do inside this building um, to bring it up to many, many standards, whether it's HVAC, um, the whole nine yards. So um, we did research with the DOJ and the US Access Board and we're found to be in compliance with um, with ADA with the new ramp in the front, but it also again started to surface some other, you know, potential long-term um, things coming down the pipe with this building. So again, we will be starting that process of looking at the best use of this building um, uh, going forward. So thank you. Any further discussion? Alderman Lewandowski. Yes, I would like to make a comment on this and I spoke to a representative of the Department of Justice in Washington, D.C. on the phone, and they told me that this building does not meet the requirements. Uh, since the remodeling in 2010, 
This building is now considered a new building and has to be meet the requirements from 1991. And uh, requirements in 1991 require all public government buildings to have 50% of all entrances wheelchair accessible. And this building has five entrances. Thank you for those comments. The, uh, any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve eyes, three no's. Thank you. We'll go on to item 7.4, which is an RC by law and licensing recommending granting a temporary Class B license for the Gateway Neighborhood Association for a one-day event to be held on Michigan Avenue on 824-13. Alderman Vanderweel. I move that the RC be accepted and adapted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. That motion is before us for further discussion. Anyone? Seeing none, please call the roll. Fifteen ayes. Next is 7.5, which is an RC by law and licensing recommending that the Common Council not renew the taxi cab operator license 87-86-73 held by Mariana Oles. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion. Under discussion. Is Mariano Oles here this evening? He is here. Um, we had discussion with him at our previous law and licensing meeting. Um, he did have uh, his record while he was driving taxi cab. He had a speeding ticket in 2011 and a seatbelt violation in 2012. Um, when we f asked him some further questions about the seatbelt violation and um, rules for when he's driving taxi, um, for we went into a little bit of depth as far as um, when children are in restraints, that type of thing. And based on his responses, um, the committee as well as the police department, we weren't real comfortable with the fact that um, he wasn't aware of the, his responsibility as a taxi cab driver. Thank you. Mariano, would you like to make any comments? No, I was just gonna tell you. About Could you wanna step up to the front, please? About the conviction about the uh, no insurance on the taxi while I was driving, and uh, I got this from the police saying that the conviction is for not having proof of the of the insurance, and uh, I don't know if that's that's all I have. To say. Thank you for making us aware of that. Any other discussion? You can sit down then. Would the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen ayes, one no, one abstention. Thank you. Next, we'll go on to item uh, seven point six, NRC by strategic fiscal planning recommended filing recommend filing document to repeal resolution number one twenty eight dash eleven dash twelve, relating to ratifying and implementing a special charge for garbage and refuge disposal services provided by the city. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt. Second. We have a motion before us. Thank you for that motion and support. Any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen ayes, one no, one abstention. Next is item 7.7, .7, an RC by law and licensing recommending granting taxi cab business license 2997, the best taxi. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, move the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Any discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen eyes, two no's. Next is item 7.8, an RC by Public Works recommending approving the use of Evergreen and Quarryview Parks 
for the Making Spirits Bright drive-through display holiday light show and passing the attached substitute resolution. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The motion on 7.8 is before us. Any further discussion? You would also be passing the substitute resolution. And pass the substitute resolution. Okay, thank and you. that's understood that we're canceling the substitute resolution. Under Alderman Hammond. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to, uh, first off, just thank both groups for coming and working together. I know this has been a fairly contentious issue for, for both groups, um, and I appreciate them working together and compromising, and hopefully over the next couple of years we can look towards a more permanent solution. But I just want to say publicly I certainly appreciate their efforts and willingness to compromise and, and discuss this issue. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Boren. Thanks, Mayor. I just want to make a clarification. We are passing the substitute resolution on yes. this one, correct? That's Madam correct. City Clerk? Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Any other discussion? Okay, will the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen ayes, uh, zero noes, and one abstention. Okay, and then items uh, 7.9 through 7.12 will be referred. Uh, ordinances number 8, 8.1 will be referred to strategic fiscal planning. Under uh, matters laid over, we have item 9.1, which is an RO number 72-1314 by the City Planning Commission recommending the rezoning of the property located at uh, 2708 Superior Avenue from SI Suburban Industrial to SC Suburban Commercial. Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to accept a file and place and pass the resolution for the ordinance. Thank you for that motion and support. That motion on item 9.1 is before us. Any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? 14 ayes, one abstention. We'll go on to item 9.2, resolution number 35 of 1314 by Alderman Hammond, Carlson, Bellinger, Dassler authorizing a transfer of appropriations to establish appropriations for the purpose and demolition of uh, 1014 B Erie Avenue. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move we put the resolution upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded to put 9.2 upon its passage. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen ayes, one abstention. Next, 9.3 is a general ordinance, number 12-13-14, by Alderman Donahue, Boren, Hammond, Vanderweel, and Dassler, amending the municipal code as to add and delete various positions in the police department's table of organization. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move uh, uh, to place the um, ordinance upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The motion on 9.3 is before us. Any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? 14 ayes, one abstention. Next, we'll go on to other matters. City Attorney. 10.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Merlin Rush stating problems that are occurring with seagulls nesting on top of Washington School and making messes on rooftops. That will be referred to Public Protection and Safety. 10.2 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2014 and June 30, 2015. That will go to Law and Licensing. 10.3 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Greg Parmley, Martins, Trilling True Value, stating his concerns regarding the intersection of North 14th Street and Michigan Avenue, asking that the Michigan Avenue business owners be notified of a future meeting of public protection and safety where this issue could be discussed. That will go to public protection and safety. 10.4 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting communication from Extanet Systems, Inc., 
requesting an encroachment for the installation of new underground conduit structures for fiber optic cable at 10 Avenue and South Evans Street. That'll go to City Planning Commission. 10.5 is an ordinance granting Extinet Systems, Inc., its successors in the science privilege of encroaching upon described portions of the city's right of way located near Penn Avenue and South Evans Street in the city for the purpose of installation of new underground conduit structures for fiber optic cable. That'll go to City Planning Commission. 10.6 is a communication from Extinet Systems requesting an encroachment for the installation of new underground conduit structures for fiber optic cable at North 10th Street and North Avenue. That'll be referred to the City Planning Commission. 10.7 is the ordinance granting Extinet Systems its successors and assigns the privilege of encroaching upon described portions of the city's right of way located near 10th Street and North Avenue for the purpose of installation of new underground conduit structures for fiber optic cable. That'll go to City Planning Commission. 10.8 is a communication from Extinet Inc. requesting an encroachment for installation of new underground conduit structures for fiber optic cable at North 10th and Bluff Avenue. City Planning Commission. 10.9 is the encroachment ordinance granting Extinet uh, the privilege of encroaching in that area of North 10th and Bluff Avenue. And that'll also go to City Planning Commission. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to convene the closed session under the exemption provided in sec section 19.851E uh, uh, of the Wisconsin statutes for the purpose of deliberating the possible sale of public property work. Uh, competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session. Second. It's been moved and seconded to go into closed session. Will the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen ayes. <clears throat> we'll take a five-minute break. Five break. We'll five break then and reconvene. <laughs> 